4, Love and Thunder Ending Explained 4, Jane Foster, Natalie Portman, ended their relationship and getting dumped has left him at a pretty low point in his life, he's been bringing the thunder, but he hasn't necessarily been feeling the love, and it's clearly taking a toll on his heroics. But all of that moping has to be set aside when he discovers that Gore the God Butcher, Christian Bale, has been killing gods around the galaxy and his most recent target was Sif, Jamie Alexander. When Gore sets his sights on New Asgard, Thor is surprised to discover that the sleepy fishing village has a new hero wearing his costume and wielding Mjolnir. In the time since Thor and Jane parted ways, Jane was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer, and the chemo hasn't been helping. Unbeknownst to either of them at the time, Thor's love for Jane and Mjolnir bound the two together, and once Thor moved on to using Stormbreaker, Mjolnir called out to Jane in her hour of need. Imbued with the power of the gods, which improves Jane's physical appearance, but not her physical, she takes on the mantle of mighty Thor and jumps into action when Gore kidnaps all of the Asgardian children from the village. Together, Thor, Jane, King Valkyrie, Tessa Thompson, and Korg, Taika Waititi, are thrown into a mission to enlist the rest of the gods to take action against Gore, which unfortunately goes nowhere because the gods only care about themselves. After a brief romantic interlude aboard the Aegir where Thor and Jane tiptoe around their feelings for each other and Jane blurts out that she has cancer, Thor, Jane, and Valkyrie venture into the Shadow Realm to face off against Gore and things go. Valkyrie gets run through with the Necrosword, resulting in her losing a kidney, Thor loses Stormbreaker which will allow Gore to reach eternity, Jane learns that she will die if she uses Mjolnir again, and they are unable to rescue the children from Gore. Dot with Jane and Valkyrie out of commission, Thor arrives at the center of the universe fully prepared to fight Gore alone. But instead of doing his own thing, like he did when he was working with the Guardians of the Galaxy at the beginning of the film, he decides to enlist the children of Asgard, and other places, to help fight off Gore's shadow monsters. For a temporary period of time, he instills Axel, Kieran L. Dyer, and the other children with the power of his thunder, and they absolutely go to town on Gore's shadow monsters. Which is the best part of the film. While not directly mentioned by name, one of the fallen statues during the final battle is that of a celestial, subtly linking Thor, love and thunder with the Eternals. Thor and Gore engage in battle once again, with Thor managing to gain the upper hand throughout most of the battle with the help of Zeus Thunderbolt. But as the battle wears on, Gore comes close to killing Thor with the Necrosword. Back in New Asgard, Jane senses that Thor is about to be killed, and she makes the decision to pick up Mjolnir one last time and go out in a blaze of glory. She arrives at the center of the universe, much to Thor's disappointment, as he realizes that her heroics will kill her. While Jane takes on Gore, Thor turns his focus to Stormbreaker and tries to stop his trusty axe from opening the portal to eternity. There's a moment of levity in the midst of the nail-biting battle, where Jane corrects Gore about what her title is. She isn't Lady Thor, she's Mighty Thor, or Drive Jane Foster. But the levity is cut short when the Necrosword is destroyed and then reforged with a newly shattered Mjolnir, ensuring that both are destroyed permanently, severing the lifelines of both Jane and Gore. In the face of defeat, Gore makes his way through the portal, determined to still get his revenge. During their brief, and very exposed, trip to Omnipotent City, Zeus, Russell Crowe, theorized that Gore would never be able to reach eternity, but he was wrong. Once Gore stole Stormbreaker from Thor, he was able to use the Bivris to open the portal with the intent of asking eternity to kill all of the gods for him. However, in the Shadow Realm, Gore revealed that, just like Jane, he was slowly dying, and with both the Necrosword and Mjolnir destroyed during the final battle. In the Shadow Realm, Gore revealed that, just like Jane, he was slowly dying, and with both the Necrosword and Mjolnir destroyed during the final battle. By the time they reach eternity they are both untethered from the weapons that were keeping them alive. Gore's motivation for destroying the gods is to get revenge on them for turning their backs on him when his daughter died, but at the eleventh hour, as he kneels before eternity, he has a change of heart. Instead of fighting him or trying to stop him, Thor explains that he would rather spend his final moments, and Jane's final moments, with her, and as Gore watches Thor holding Jane he is reminded of his daughter's death. 
Instead of asking eternity to kill all of the gods, he asks the entity to bring his daughter back to life, but the catch is the fact that he is dying and he doesn't want her to be alone. Jane assures him that his daughter won't be alone, Thor will take her on as his charge, and in the end, neither of them will be alone. Eternity creates love, India Hemsworth, and the father and daughter are reunited once more before Gore dies. At the same time, Jane and Thor share one last laugh and one last kiss, before she turns to stardust in his arms, indicating that Milner not only transformed her into mighty Thor, but into a god as well. Jane's dying wish for Thor is for him not to shut himself off from love as he did during their eight years apart. In the final moments of the film, Korg tells the audience about Jane's legacy as mighty Thor as we are shown the statue that they erected for her in New Asgard. Additionally, we are shown, and told, that Valkyrie and Sif decided to teach the children self-defense so they would have a greater chance to face a future threat with a particular focus on Axel and how he's coming into his own abilities. But perhaps the best part of Korg's epilogue arrives when we get a glimpse into the domestic bliss that Thor has fallen into as he gets a front row seat to the trials and tribulations of parenting a strong-willed little girl. She doesn't want pan flaps today even though she liked them yesterday, she wants to wear cute slippers instead of sturdy boots. It's a full circle moment for Thor as the Jane and Thor flashbacks revealed that he had thought about having children, which makes it even more bittersweet now that Jane isn't in the picture. As they get ready to head out for the day, it may seem like he's getting her ready to go to school, but in reality, they are gearing up to go into battle because, as Korg reveals, this is the duo known as Love and Thunder. Like this video subscribe this channel thanks to watching and bye.